Hello dear algorithm traders. My new YouTube video is an anniversary video, so today we will take a look into the future to see how our technology could change in the next 30 years, both privately and in trading. Very interesting and exciting projects are just around the corner, which we can look forward to. But this could also lead to possible situations that we should then question critically if necessary. Of course, I'm not a clairvoyant who can foresee the future, so this is just fiction. In the end, the user always decides whether the things we are talking about make sense or not, if it comes to the point that this technology conquers the market. First of all, I created this trading channel to accelerate my own development process. Since, of course, I don't know everything, detailed research is often necessary, so I force myself to absorb very in-depth knowledge and understand it. The subsequent task of presenting the relevant facts in the video as simply as possible results in interesting projects that help me to penetrate even deeper into the market. It is a kind of turbo for my own absorption of knowledge, with the advantage of developing creative ideas for my future from this knowledge. I uploaded my first YouTube video almost a year ago, and I never thought that so many people would be interested in it. 40 videos with 23,644 views and a playback time of 3,200 hours, that's a hell of a lot in the small market niche of algorithms profiling. Incidentally, a total of 476 subscribers follow me. I find it amazing that my videos have appeared almost 200,000 times in the form of impressions so that a YouTuber clicks on them. First of all I would like to thank all followers for the positive feedback, confirmations and of course creative ideas. In the last few months I have been able to get to know great people, professional programmers and very successful traders, for which I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of you in particular. My aim is not to reach 100,000 followers, that would also be unrealistic, as there are only 50,000 forex or future traders in Germany. Algorithm profiling is only interesting for a very special target group, which is why I see this channel as a kind of elite circle, where crazy traders like me come together. Today we don't want to talk about whether beaming or time travel will be realistic in the future, but rather deal with topics that may not be that far removed from us. My first cell phone still cost 2,500 dm and at the time I paid 6,000 dm for the car phone. The cell phones then became smaller and smaller and of course cheaper. That was 30 years ago. Believe it or not, progress will accelerate again in the next 30 years. We are already working on autonomous vehicles. Because in the future many drivers will no longer feel like standing in traffic jams for hours. A traffic control system in the city should provide a remedy, which gives each road user individual speed recommendations in order to save the driver a waiting time at the traffic lights. In addition, the system is even able to tell the driver how long it will be before the traffic light turns green again. If this information is sent directly to the autonomous vehicle, we could be spared long waiting times in the medium term. The yellow pages used to be used in book form and Windows had to be installed with a DVD. Today everything runs over the internet and it is much faster and more efficient. A single Google search runs over 2,000 servers on two to three continents. That is a clear difference compared to the yellow pages. Large amounts of data were stored on external hard drives, these are increasingly being replaced by cloud-based storage. The cloud means something like external work on other people's computers. Saving data in the cloud has advantages that cannot be denied. Whatever you copy into such a data cloud, ideally is then always and everywhere available. So you can show grandma the family photos on her television or in a conference hotel you can quickly call up the presentation that you have prepared in the office. We use the cloud every day without noticing. Our emails are in a cloud, the photos from the iPhone and also Netflix or Prime are provided by a cloud. With Google Maps we always find the right way, even with Spotify we don't care where the music is, it's all about the access rights that entitle you to listen to music. Anyone who has concerns about security should no longer query their bank details via the cloud in the future. That means we already trust the cloud more than we realize. But that is only the beginning. It is possible that in a few years we will be handling our entire infrastructure via the cloud. That means our servers, networks and even complex storage infrastructures are completely in the cloud. 
Theoretically, we would then no longer need any hardware, but basically just a kind of browser that brings us to the cloud. This would make expensive processors, graphics cards and RAM memory a thing of the past and the computer as we know it today would become extinct. The cell phones would also get by without hardware. The prerequisite would of course be an almost latency-free internet. You can then build your own infrastructure within seconds, access high-quality hardware and software and merge different apps without programming knowledge. Small companies could then afford high-quality software. A complete company network with servers, routers and switches is set up in the cloud within seconds and can be expanded at any time. This allows different people in different locations to work in the same program at the same time. The greatest advantage, however, is to use the resources as required. In addition, artificial intelligence will play a very important role in the future, especially in the cloud sector, we are already familiar with self-learning AI in the area of speech recognition. Imagine that. Two authors are writing a book at the same time and real-time editors correct the errors immediately in the background. Scientists from around the world are working together on a drug via the cloud at the same time. In this way, for example, vaccines or even a cancer drug could be developed much faster and more effectively. New vehicles or spaceships that are designed could be immediately created as a prototype using a quantum computer. This could significantly reduce the development time. In the future, we could use the cloud to make real-time phone calls in all languages or even speak to one another. The AI immediately translates all languages. There will probably be no more letters in the future either. The functions of smart home will also improve significantly in the future, not only heating, light, alarm system and electricity can be controlled while on the go, the refrigerator orders new goods, the flowers are watered automatically. And when you are abroad, to monitor the apartment you only use an app. The heating goes down and the lights turn off as soon as you leave the apartment. In the future, the kitchen will also automatically prepare our meals for us. It is practically like having your own domestic help who always looks after the right thing. Many things will also change in the stock market area. Just as there is only one forex market, all exchanges will join forces in the future and move their entire infrastructure to the cloud. The number of brokers will be extremely reduced and the broker will become a service provider who even offers algorithms or order strategies developed in-house. This will significantly reduce the costs for spread, fees or commissions. This creates a number of advantages for the retail trader. He can see his previously configured screen on any PC, iPad or mobile phone and work individually with his settings. He can change his broker or his stock exchange software within a few minutes. Since theoretically every market participant has the same latency times in the cloud, there are artificial time blocks. These time blocks can be reduced by higher fees in order to achieve faster market entry. Similar to the way certain big players come together, there will also be trader groups in the retail sector in order to have a chance against the larger market participants. The cloud makes the exchange even faster and more opaque for many participants. Due to the fact that trading is primarily based on algorithms, the candlestick charts will become less and less important. There will be new algorithm charts that give participants even deeper market insights. The future DOM and the time and sales list will bring deeper insights into a 3D animation. That can be individually filtered. As you can see, with this 3D DOM you are able to absorb 33% more information in the same time. If you can do this and interpret this information correctly, you can significantly increase your profit rates. Market technology and volume trading are being replaced by trading algorithms. However, we should be aware that the big players will always be one step ahead of us in the future. In a few years there will be regular trading of sophisticated algorithms that will also bring retail traders considerable advantages in certain situations. Quants and programmers who know about it will make millions in the future. The algorithms make the trader of the future more and more of a tracker. Those who can best identify these algorithms will be successful as a trader. New data glasses make it possible to show virtual, interactive, 3D objects in the real environment as if they were actually physically present. This means that there will be no screens in the future. With these glasses, a trader can theoretically go public for a short time in his mobile home or with friends without disturbing anyone. 
Possible applications are the modeling of 3D objects directly on the desk or games that combine the real world with virtual elements. The future could possibly be very exciting, because not only does the stock market benefit from it, but also people. In the medical sector in particular, doctors could also perform operations around the world using robotic arms via the cloud. With new washing machines we will reduce our water consumption by up to 90% in the future. Nylon balls are used for cleaning, which attract dirt particles like a magnet. Just as there is a printer in almost every household nowadays, in the future it will be a 3D printer that can print everything from egg cups, toolboxes, Star Wars figures to individual shapes. There may also be contact lenses with a zoom function. This visual aid consists of a series of telescopic lenses that were originally developed for flying drones. They allow the wearer to instantly switch between normal vision and triple magnification at the blink of an eye. In the future, drones will have more tasks. In addition to delivering packages, drones could even examine bridges or buildings, inspect pipelines from the air, explore unaccessible areas or even save lives. Roads could be covered with solar cells in the future. These glass road pavements not only provide electricity, but can also illuminate themselves, display markings, or keep the streets free of ice. We can already charge our cell phone freely via induction. Perhaps one day it will also be possible to send our normal electricity to consumers via the radio network. That would save us the annoying cables. Imagine the electric cars would charge while driving. The cloud could possibly even be the transmitter for this. But in addition to all the relief, the cloud also brings with it dangers. 89% of Android apps and 39% of iOS apps require access to private information. These apps send our data to cloud servers to both boost the performance of the application and to store our data for advertising. Of course, big data companies claim that they would not store our data for long or use it in a malicious way. As soon as we accept their terms, which incidentally we rarely read, our private data is no longer private. This data is then in the cloud. This cloud is neither tangible nor can we, as data providers, fall back on it. We get access to applications that might make our life easier or better, but what actually happens to our data? Of course, one could argue that a large company can spend more money on cloud security than a single person could. Nevertheless, a method would have to be developed that does not require the storage of personal data. One could create algorithms that work locally instead of being mixed with other data sets in a centralized manner. Of course, you can't expect that from companies like Google, who live from data collection. That is why there will be companies in the future that offer a special cloud private sphere. The cloud isn't dangerous, but it's the excuse and tool that enables the bulk collection of our personal data. Perhaps after seeing my contribution some of them will be secretly happy that they will retire in 20 or 30 years at the latest so as not to have to experience this situation. But we all know that the future is a creeping development process that does not come overnight, but that develops very slowly. And when the stock markets change, we have to be ready to change us too, because changes only benefit those who are prepared for them. Of course I can't say whether it will get better if it changes, but I can say that much, it has to change if it is to be good. I wish you all the best in trading and keep my fingers crossed for you. Kind regards Michael.